I'll just dismiss you and get extra points. For <laughs> Apparently, there's somebody after us. Yeah. Long day. Yeah. What a fun day. Yeah. Fun. We're recording now, so you can go ahead. Glad it's a fun day. I thought you might be. Um, let me tell you about Chauvin Aquaponics and our place first a few moments, and then we can get into our project, because these are both relatively easy to get through. Um, our facilities were built in 1975. If we were able to look through this wall, they're right over there on the hill, and they are within the focus area. In fact, uh, here's focus area blue line, green dot is us, red arrow pointing to it. Uh, this is, in fact, the property. You know, Chauvin, the main building right here. By the way, it's pronounced Chauvin, according to the uh, people who run the trust, and I suspect they would know. And uh, Chauvin uh, looks like it was built during the 1950s Kremlin build of some sort. But we have a nice little uh, greenhouse here. You can see these two buildings. Those are the greenhouses and an attached classroom. Uh, built in 75 out of glass, tempered glass, it, it really uh, did well for many years, but then it went downhill fast when it started being neglected. And it began getting neglected really in about the 90s. Uh, I understand at one point they had a small engine repair class in the building where they just had parts strewn everywhere. And they had to pay somebody, you know, and there's lots of stories. By the time we got there in 2011, what had taken place was that the administration had said to Schaffen's administration, do something or tear it down, it's falling apart. And they were right. Water had started coming through. The floor was leaking. It's concrete floor that's built on a hill. You can, as I said, you see it through here, you can see it's on the hill. And so there's a lower section that's at the bottom of the hill, and the greenhouse sits on top. Uh, and so does the classroom, and we, the classroom underneath the greenhouse got pretty badly damaged. So they bring me in, and, and um, through grants, and uh, my experience is all in the private sector. Uh, this nonprofit stuff's easy. Their idea of financial success is you break even. <laughs> so I'm having a lot of fun with their idea of what's called a purchase order and requisitions, and I managed to get some of my friends at the banks to give us money from their trusts. And uh, we were able to recover the whole building with Lexan now. And we're turning it into a controlled environment greenhouse, which will probably be one of the only ones, certainly in this part of northeastern Ohio. And as to size, it may be one of the largest ones in Ohio. Um, that becomes necessary because of our mission, which is teaching people how to grow food um, as a business, putatively, because we are a career center but um, also because we have a deep and abiding belief that the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket environmentally. And uh, you could talk about any number of single events that in and of themselves are making things very bad. Climate change makes it very unreliable for farmers to grow food. They don't know what the season's going to bring. They lose a crop. How many of those can you do in a, in a couple of seasons and you're out of business? And things like Fukushima, things like Fukushima can mean the end for all of us. It's truly existential when you think that they're pouring somewhere near six Olympic swimming pools worth of highly radioactive water every single day by their own admission. That's what they're admitting to. And forget the radiation. It is a big ocean. But think in terms of viruses and bacteria that will mutate. And if you don't think that's enough radiation to cause that to happen, you're mistaken. And, and small things mutate faster than big things. And they're damaged easier than big things by radiation. And we've got a future that doesn't look good. And it just got worse on Election Day. <laughs> so, you know, when you talk about environmentally, we feel that it's very important to give skills to everybody to grow food, know how to do it, and know how to do it indoors. Um, that's what we're about. So, we, we take every opportunity to uh, suck up uh, educational opportunities for our kids. Um, we take every opportunity to get grants. Uh, we just got an $80,000 chiller from 
Youngstown Thermal, they're going to help us out with making it a controlled environment greenhouse. And now you guys have shown up with this very kind offer to allow us to do something we have wanted to do for a while. And I think somebody must have planned to do in 1975 when they built the place because they landscaped for it, but there's no water. And that is, we want to, we want to put in uh, a set of waterfalls that become a landmark. We have a piece of property and it's right here. And it's between our driveways. And I'm telling you, there's a basin there, there's a basin there, and there's a basin there. And these stone walls that were put in are made of that same kind of stone. This is Paul, he's with our team. This is Regina, she also is. Uh, it's, it's made of that same kind of stone that if you used to wander along the waterfront here at the mills, you'd see they had it in their foundations. Uh, the school systems had a lot of work done uh, where they picked up some of this stuff and were able to use it during different facility renovations, and ours apparently had the same thing. Anyhow, uh, I wanted to go through this with you that we have, uh, there's only 30 pages of this. I should be through it relatively soon. Uh, we're calling it the Waterfalls at Schaffen. Um, it's a water site feature in the downtown focus area. It demonstrates sustainability, water remediation, local food, and green infrastructure themes. It's a new community space, a water place with falls and pools filled with koi. Aquaponic in design and function, the waterfalls at Schaffen is a fully functional plant and fish symbiotic growing system. Um, you might notice these towers, and you've probably seen them in various things before, wherever we're talking about organic food. They grow, they run water down the towers, and, and naturally, uh, with the way the plumbing works with our system, this will this will work out kind of well because our sump is right there at the bottom of that, so it makes it very easy to pump the water up. Uh, we'll use that, and behind the building here, right there, we have grow beds also. And we have a open uh, drain here. Um, I don't want to make it sound like it's the bubonic plague, but it's rather a storm drain that there's a grade in that would allow me to put a four inch pipe from this set of aquaponic circulating water actually into an irrigating our grow beds in the back. So we'd be able to continue uh, the whole operation into quite a bit of growing area. Uh, right now, a lot of this area is unkempt and untaken care of and uh, is in need of a makeover and, and some maintenance. Uh, we've managed to talk the school system into buying the necessary equipment to keep things going um, in the back and, and, and sort of uh, keep the place uh, trimmed and maintained. And we have a landscape arts class that does work at that, so we're feeling very sanguine about that possibility. Uh, we'd like to make it um, also, our community is a surrounding area that has well over uh, a few hundred people living in it. Uh, we have high-rise seniors in a block directly adjacent to us, uh, if you will, Caddy Corner, using a Youngstown Western PA phrase. And uh, we have uh, two preschools in that same block. And we have, of course, the Schaffen campus. And then the entire downtown Y uses that street as some sort of a workout thing. It's just appalling to watch them doing it every day, up and down and up. And it's like, you know, apparently they're really fearful of having a heart attack. Um, because going up and down this hill will kill you after a while. It's, it's a steep hill. In fact, we were going we to plateau it at one point, put terraces on it, and turn it into um, the Civil War governor of Ohio's uh, a memorial for him because uh, his family's from here. What's their names? Um, just died. Nice people. Well, anyhow, the Civil War governor came from Youngstown. And we're going to put it's that steep of a hill. But you can see that this is the other side of that hill, by the way. That street I'm describing is directly opposite and on the other side of our greenhouse. So it's quite a, quite a walk up. We have a very big, though, community of people that come in and around this area. And so we thought we'd put some benches down, we put in some lighting, we put in some water, and make it a, a place of respite. 
a place that anybody could come and buy. And while they're there, if they'd like, they can also use the water dispensary, which has is, is been crafted to be a certain height so that your jugs can only be like one gallon at a time. And they could take home water with them to take care of their own plants. We've had requests for that in the past and didn't understand or know, and still don't understand or know, just how fascinating that might be to the public. But since we've had requests for it, we put it in and thought it might be a nice item as part of the feature. And uh, let me tell you about, uh, let's see here. I'm sure you all know that aquaponics works by the fish wasting in the water. It turns into a, a it turns into nitrate eventually. It turns into fertilizer. That's how it works. And then the plants take that up and make the water clean for the fish. It's a remediation system. You never throw the water away, not, not usually. When it's outside, it's a different situation. In the winter, of course, we have to be very careful. These are shallow pools. We'll probably take the fish indoors. I put in a, a picture of our indoor 900-gallon aquarium that we just got done building. And it's uh, being, it will be the source of the water for the dispensary during the winter time. Uh, we're able to put piping out. This, if you look at how this is set up, uh, this tank is actually at the back of this room. And so the dispensary for water is going to be up in here, uh, the top part of this. And uh, we're able to bring a pipe right out and plug into that during the winter time. And so continue the service, essentially, even though we can't keep the koi out there during the winter. They could if they were deeper ponds. They're not. They're kind of shallow. So for that part of it, we're gonna, it's a seasonal kind of thing. Uh, even so, we will try and keep the water going as much as we can. Uh, we're told there's things that can be done about that uh, once the fish are out. You can't do them while the fish are in because it's like throwing chemicals in the water. Uh, the lights, etc. Uh, we have gotten all permissions we need to do this and uh, we have done our budgets and our plan uh, on the following basis. Uh, we have people and students and volunteers, and uh, I'm a member of the Church of Low Expectations. We wake up in the morning and we repeat our daily mantra, people are no damn good, and you just can't count on them. <laughs> but um, having said that, you know, individuals are kind of nice, and every now and then they really surprise you. So our plans are they're really going to be nice and surprise us. But we're not fools, and we've built a contractor into every one of these. One way or another, we have it so that we can finish it, and, and it's going to move along. Um, my prior, I'm, I'm the project manager here. I, I've been for Schaffen's Aquaponics Center since they established it, and I've uh, been doing all these other projects. But prior to that, um, I start and finish things. Uh, if you read the business journal, I founded that in 1984. If you buy your license plates online, you're welcome. I did that in 90 or something, 90, 92, right after Tim Berners-Lee invented the web. Uh, I was with Al Gore. We invented the internet. Um, <laughs> actually, Al Gore was the father of the internet, we called it. But our people have experience. Um, we have a construction manager who has done almost all the work with me when we do things like this tank or anything else at the greenhouse in Paul O'Connor here. And uh, Mr. Budai, John Budai, the class instructor, last year ran the landscape arts class. And I have been impressed by his ability to get people to be better than no damn good. And so uh, we have every confidence. But that's our plan. That's our story. I'm open for any questions. What sorts of things will you be growing in those plantings and in the uh, vertical? Yeah, the verticals lend themselves to either bushy kind of vegetables like lettuce and or viney kind of things like strawberries. Most of the time you see strawberries in those, by the way, but heads of lettuce work out real well. Uh, in the back, there's no limit. Um, in the back, 
it is a traditional dirt bed uh, as opposed to a hydroponic one. Uh, and in, in there, uh, you can grow just about anything. The current classes are focused on either growing food or flowers. And um, they go through both during the semester. Since you do have um, you know, residents coming through there and you're planning on this being like a place of respite, could you also maybe expand on that a little bit and have it become a community garden? You know, because, I mean, the senior powers, they can't really grow. You have no idea how easy it would be, too, because we have offices <laughs> here. Now, coming down from here is an entire hillside, and if you drive by, you'll notice it's an overgrown mess. Mm -hmm. And yet, it's terraced. And if you get up in there, and if, so the answer could be very easily, yeah, we could say to anybody with a real interest, uh, here's a plot. Yeah. Fill that up. Here's some more. Mm -hmm. We have probably 300 feet worth of 20 foot wide. Okay, uh, and it's and it's overgrown and it's neglected and nobody's going to do anything with it if we don't. It's okay. the back of a parking lot on one side and the bottom of a hill on another. And yet it's. You know, this is the downtown, and it's what you see when you come through. You go up Watch Street, this is your left-hand side view. Yeah. I have a, a little question, just to, because the, the, I'm looking at the, at the photographs, and the plays look a lot smaller than they look in the renderings. In the renderings, they look kind of, it, it looks much larger. So, I'm, I'm just yeah, wondering... this has been, um, we had Don Trump help out with this. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, Chauncey... Um, the first ones he did were, of course, much, much larger. Um, and yet, what we're trying to what we were trying to do is get some of the detail. Like up in here, there's an area. It's just the way this is landscape makes these things easy to do. But there's an opportunity to put like a small reflecting pool. It wouldn't be much bigger than this. But literally, one of those flat pools that it looks like the water's going over the edge and never ending. And, uh, 